For today's introduction to mirrors and symmetry, we'll need a demonstrator. Wow. Luckily, the famous Dexter Triangle of Flatland has volunteered. Well, hello there, little boys and girls out in Kaladatal land. We'll also need a mirror. Mm. Well, I see a reflection of myself. How about that? We can tilt the mirror backwards and forwards. Whoa, it's going down into the plane. How about that? Oh my goodness, it's tilting up out of the plane. Wow, that's really, really remarkable. This sub video is great. When we add another mirror, things get considerably more interesting. Okay, okay. Here it comes. Again, we can tilt the mirror backwards and forwards, but this time we see much more. Oh my goodness. An infinite expanse. Well, now, now it's tilting down into the plane. Now, now it's curving up away. How about that? Now it's just right. By lining up two mirrors edge to edge, we can see what is called dihedral symmetry. Okay. Well, look at there. That's a 90 degree angle. And I see four images of myself, and only two are actually reversed. Well, I see eight images of myself, and only four are reversed. What other angles would work? Well, I see six images of myself, and only three are reversed. When we add a third mirror, we can see reflections extending across the entire plane. No way. This is what's known as a tessellation. No way. You're telling me that when I reflect across the sides of that triangle, I'll see a, a, an infinite expanse of little old Dexter triangles tile on the plane. Looks like it to me. Wow, that's really remarkable. <laughs> for different mirror arrangements, too. No way. Like what? You're telling me that a 45-45-90 degree triangle will work, too? Don't take my word for it. Believe your eyes. Wow. Sometime I ought to sit down and work out all the other shapes that you can reflect across their sides and tile the plane. You've just seen how kaleidoscopes work. They're made of mirrors that reflect the same image many times. Sure are. You've also seen that tilting a mirror causes the image in it to tilt too. Sure do. Now watch what happens when these two ideas get combined. Sure will. There we're tilting. Now what am I seeing here? Well, you're seeing mirrors lined along the planes of symmetry of a cube. And the chamber itself is 1 48th of a cube. And we see axes because one of the mirrored borders is reflected with cubic symmetry. Those do look like axes. Now, watch what happens when this kaleidoscope partially goes through the plane. Oh my goodness. Can you see the three-dimensional figure? I sure can. There's 48 little dexter triangles arranged on the faces of that there cube. And when we rotate the kaleidoscope, we can see even more shapes. Oh my goodness. Wow, that looks like the octahedron has the same reflective symmetry as the cube. Now we can change the kaleidoscope and see even different shapes. Oh my goodness. What's this here? This is a 24th of a cube. I see a raw mcdodecahedron. Absolutely. And there's another cube. Is that a tetrahedron? Almost. We can recreate the shapes we've seen here so far with a few mirrors or with a computer program such as Kaleidotile. Coming up next, however, is a sequence that might give you a little more trouble if you were to try it in real life. Uh oh. So what are we doing here? Are we capping off the end of our tetrahedron? Yeah, we're sitting in the middle of an irregular tetrahedron that's mirrored on all of the inside faces. Are you saying that if you reflect across the sides of that tetrahedron, you can tile all of space? That's exactly what I'm saying. Wow, well that's pretty neat. Do you think all the little boys and girls can make their own kaleidoscopes? 
Yeah, there are instructions in the Kaleidotile teaching materials. Well, that's great. I'll have to look for that.